folks, Canadian Prepper here. Welcome back to the Daily Dose of Doom and Gloom, the World War III schnitzel hitting the Fitzel report. We got a lot to talk about today. Boy, you're probably wondering, what is the schnitzel hitting the Fitzel? These colloquialisms have gone too far. Well, the schnitzel hitting the Fizzle is derived from shizzy hitting the fizzy, which is a neologism coined by Canadian Prepper, which is the Snoop Dogg version of shit hitting the fan, okay? If you don't know what shit hitting the fan is, it's basically what preppers use to describe a scenario in which the critical infrastructural systems that sustain human life are suddenly ground to a halt. Everything stops. The supply trucks stop, the power stops coming through the electrical lines, the electrical signals stop coming through the fiber optic cables, so no more internet. The water stops throwing through the pipes. There's no more gasoline at the pumps and everything grinds to a halt. And it's a big Mad Max game of musical chairs. And it's all going to come down to, do you have the skills, the knowledge? Do you have the networks? Do you have the resources that you are going to need if and when this thing that I'm talking about happens? Understand that the government does not have the resources to take care of everybody. This is not a slight against the government, okay? The government simply cannot have the means to take care of everybody. They have a certain capacity, okay? And they even have a certain overflow, adaptive capacity, as it's called, okay? But once you go over that curve, and I know you guys are sick of hearing about curves and all this stuff, but understand that it doesn't take much to for the government to exceed the threshold of its capabilities and then you are left to your own devices and this is why you gotta have a plan because nothing is God given. A lot of people think they look at Star Trek and this is gonna be a bit of an errant, a rant video for you today guys. So if you're not you know, hip to the channel and you're just here for the World War III news, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna talk about daily events. We're gonna talk about the future direction of this channel. YouTube send me this fake gold thing today. And uh, we're gonna talk about some gear reviews and just general you know, preparedness philosophy and otherwise. But you need to understand that I think a lot of people make these assumptions about the world because right now we live in this giant incubator. I call it the concrete matrix, okay? And I was talking about the concrete matrix. You can go back, watch my 2016 video long before uh, Andrew Tate had sort of taken over the metaphor to represent uh, anti-establishmentarianism, okay? I was talking about it in the sense that the more sophisticated and technologically complex the world becomes, the greater, the greater the likelihood that we descend into total chaos and anarchy when the shit hits the fan because fewer and fewer people have those core survival skills that carry the 95 billion humans through the bulk of human evolution, okay? There was 93 billion humans that never ever seen an automobile. Okay, and they had these core skills, these self-reliance capabilities that have now mostly been lost because we live in this giant incubator. That's what the city is. The electricity that flows through the power lines, the electric signals that flow through your fiber optic cables or through the airwaves, you have the water that flows through the taps, the gasoline at the pumps, and all of these critical infrastructural systems are there sustaining life. Most people seldom step outside of that. If they do, it's to some roadside attraction, it's to some very nicely groomed uh, campsite, but that's the extent. Most people have never been in raw bush, okay? If you've never been in raw, you know, unchartered territory, uncut bush, you don't realize how wild this world actually is. You see, we've made it over for hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, if you look at England, you know, that place looked way different than it looks now 2,000 years ago. I mean, it's been totally terraformed beyond original recognition. It's been deforested. Who knows what kinds of wildlife used to exist. I'm sure there was bears there at one point. But my point is, is that people do not realize how wild the actual world is. And I'm not just talking about how wild it is in terms of your ability or your inability to procure what you need to sustain life from the natural environment, how hard it actually is out there. 
I'm talking about how the, the wildness of our own being, of our own behavior. Everybody's civilized. Everybody's acting real nice right now. You go out, everybody waves. They hold the door. Everybody's being nice. But when the shit hits the fan, when the schnitzel hits the fizzle, especially in this society where we've not been tested. In Russia, they're tested. Every you know few decades, they get tested. They lose a few million people. They learn how to suffer. We've never truly, truly been tested here in North America, which is why it's going to be so raucous. Look, everybody's medicated. Everybody's entitled. Ain't nobody got any survival skills. People got a whole lot of guns, and uh, we're all dependent on the just-in-time delivery system. This is why, and I know this is a very Freudian, a very pessimistic view of human nature. But unfortunately, and I should probably write a book about this, but my theory is that the deeper we go into technological development, the more chaotic it becomes when everything falls apart. Because we simply don't have the capability. We don't only have the capability, we don't only have the skills, okay? We also don't have the capability to adapt. We're not as resilient, okay? We're not as elastic and neuroplastic in our ability to adapt to changing situations because we're so used to all of these creature comforts. Like I said, most people have no idea what the wild is all about. And you might think, oh, Nate's got a warehouse full of stuff he hasn't made. Look, man, I grew up in the gutter. I w I've been poor than poor. I'm not saying that I've had it, you know, as bad as six billion other people, but I was on the ass end of Canada for the longest time and I had to work 16 hour days to where I got to today. So I understand what hardship and what suffering is about and I'm grateful for that. And this is something that's the hardest thing to be able to instill in your child because you want them to endure that suffering. That's the best life lesson you can give your children when it comes to preparedness is enduring suffering. So this is why it's very important. You get out there, you, you take your licks, you get out there in the world and you suffer, man. And you truly, genuinely suffer in the sense that you don't know when the suffering is going to stop. That's the most important thing. It's not enough that you have a safety button, that you have an out. And as much as I appreciate and respect uh, some of the many guests that we're going to be interviewing from the show alone, there is a safety button. There is an escape button. But that's not to take away from what they're doing. But you almost have to be in a situation where there's no escape, where you don't know, where there's uncertainty. You need that level of stress to prepare for what may be coming. Because nothing about this, this world, this story that humankind is writing, this grand narrative about how we're moving through the great filter and we're evolving and we're going to create artificial intelligence and artificial wombs and 3D printers that are going to print things on a nanotechnological scale and we're going to just be able to snap our fingers and we're living in this endless era of abundance and we're traveling the cosmos at light speed. That is what it's like in the movies, but that's not necessarily how the story ends. I mean, the story could just simply end by, you know, everybody fights for what remains on the rock and it's a big giant game of musical chairs game theory until everything runs out. This is where we could be heading. So, Understand that this notion that I think we've all been conditioned into, that all this, this incubator, it, there's something about it which is God-given, for lack of better terms, something about it that is predestined, it is not. This could go away like that. This could go away while you're watching this video. The shit could hit, the, that's how close we are right now to just the nuclear Armageddon part. The shit could hit the fan right now as we're speaking. Ask yourself this. If it all went down at this moment of time, how long could you endure? What are things going to be like in your city? How long before downtown gets turned upside down? Ask yourself that question. I'm not saying live in fear, and that's not the point. It's the point is to put a fire under your ass and also understand that we're all, we all long for that more simple, minimalist lifestyle. This is why, you know, you got these guys who, you know, they have all this money and they realize that the life of minimalism is really the happy medium with it all. You know, okay, maybe I'll get the Ferrari, but I don't want all this furniture and all this stuff cluttering my apartment. It's about experiences. 
And when you get to that level where you can buy the Ferrari, if you're smart, if you're wise, I should say, because you're probably smart if you have the Ferrari in some capacity, you realize that it's, it's never going to make you happy. It's never going to permanently make you happy in the long run. Okay, Genuine happiness, I'm not fully understanding of where it comes from yet, but it's about, it's going to ultimately amount to legacy. It's going to amount to helping others. It's, and I know this sounds like, oh, hoo-ha, you know, sanctimonious babble. But that's really what it's about at the end of the day, your experience, okay? It, the dopamine of a billionaire, a billionaire, to put it in perspective, this is a very easy way to understand it. A hobo gets the same level of dopamine from... Uh, you know, a fast food meal that you go and buy them because you're going to be nice and you surprise them, some hobo on the street with a fast food meal. He gets the same amount of dopamine as a billionaire gets when he's buying a brand new Bugatti. Okay. And in fact, I'd probably say that he probably gets a little bit more. So understand that this is what we're chasing. This is the rat race. And the whole point of preparedness is to understand ultimately it's about the freedom, okay, to be to not have to be concerned, to not be in the rat race, to not be chasing the cheese, to not be constantly chasing better and greater hedonistic rewards. It's about being content in your own skin, ultimately. It's about just waking up in the morning and, uh, you know, enjoying the sunset and just really, you know, enjoying the experience of being alive and truly being in the moment. Anyways, we're getting way too philosophical. We're supposed to be talking about World War III. Okay, so for you uh, pragmatists out there, the Ukrainians have apparently gained a bit of a foothold on the left bank of the Dnieper River, which somewhat calls into question the narrative about the dams. And I'm not really gonna get into that, but if that was the plan all along, it makes you wonder you know, who could be at fault. Because if the water levels are lower, then that would mean that, well, maybe it was, you know, the, the Ukrainians are somewhat, have a bit of motive. If it isn't the case that the water levels are lower and it's in fact harder for them to cross over now, then the Russians uh, may be the ones that are more culpable in that scenario. Anyways, the Ukrainians are gaining a foothold. What this means in the broader context is that the Russians have some challenges ahead. And this increases the likelihood of an incident occurring at the nuclear power plant, no matter how you slice it. That's kind of the, the thing that both sides are hanging over each other's head, it seems, because you could make the argument that if the Russians are losing, they're going to blow the nuclear power plant. You can make the argument, I'm not saying they're going to do that, because of course it's on their side. If the Ukrainians are losing, they're going to try to find a way to sabotage the nuclear power plant. Then NATO gets involved. Then uh, all the troops who are currently doing exercises, the German troops are right now doing exercises in Lithuania. I know there's not a whole lot of them, but it's a foothold. It doesn't take long to set up military camps. And Poland is getting ready. Belarus is getting ready. World War III is getting ready, and we haven't even talked about China and Taiwan, or Taiwan as I call it, because uh, Taiwan is a uh, Chinese-speaking place. Uh, they uh, identify as Chinese. They all view themselves as Chinese, as far as I know, in the sense, in a historical sense, maybe not in a political communist China sense. Anyways, we're getting off point. What I'm saying is the wars are flaring up all over, and the shit could hit the fan any minute, which is why, of course... You got to prepare. Now you're probably asking yourself, what's with all the product placement? What's with all the shameless self-promotion? You know what? I got this thing and I'm going to tell you about the products in just a minute. I try to show you guys new and novel things. We have a warehouse, CanadianPreparedness.com, where we have the best, and I mean the best cutting edge, the newest, latest and greatest survival gear because, you know, like I say, it's about the experience. It's not about... It's not just about doom and gloom, living in a cabin in the woods and uh, fearing Armageddon. It's about cool gadgetry as well. And uh, so we always try to show you something new. So I'm going to talk about a few new things today. And, uh, you know, if you want them, you can get them. If not, I don't care. This is a piece of, uh, I, I think this used to be made of gold. They used to actually give you a gold button. And it's funny how art imitates life so to speak, or life imitates art, I guess, in that 
it's the same way our monetary system works. <laughs> you see, YouTube initially gave people real gold play buttons when they hit a million subscribers. And uh, unfortunately, they can't do that anymore because there's too many channels getting a million subscribers. It became way too costly. So they turned on the money printer and it went burr. And that's what happened. So we get this gold plated, I believe, probably enough gold if I were to melt it down, I could eat for a day at today's rates. But I wanna thank you guys for being a part of this whole experience. I never would have thought, it was never my intention to monetize the channel initially. It was, in fact, it was like, I think six or seven months before I decided to monetize the channel. And the only reason why I decided to monetize at the time was because I figured I would gain uh, you know, more reach with the algorithm. It was never about the money, it was all about personal interests. I mean, there's been people who've been here from the start, you know, back in the, the Kago, the General S. Lee days where we were just talking about SHTF, you know, back in the Dizzy. If you don't know who, if you know who those people are, then you're an OG, okay? And I just want to thank you guys for being a part of this whole thing. Like I say, I, I don't get too high on myself, which is why I didn't name the channel after myself. Even the name Canadian Prepper, I, I've wanted to get away from. I've wanted to have something more universal because I don't want the channel to be just about me. And I'm not trying to be didactic when I say that. I, I'm really sincere that I would like this channel to be about more. I don't want it to be a personality based channel. I want this to be about more than just preparedness. And if you're new to the channel, uh, if you want to go and watch some of our content that just isn't daily dose of doom and gloom type stuff, then check out the videos, the thumbnails that have a blue strip. And I got to say this every time because there, there are a lot of new subscribers lately. We're doing a lot of short related content and it's driving a lot of new viewers, which is great. Unfortunately, I don't know how many of them actually tune in for the long form stuff. But I would encourage you to because this is part of the problem with all the short content, as great as it is. It's very ultimately counterproductive. I, I would say there's very few people who see a cool idea in a short and actually go and, you know, try the idea themselves. There's very few people who do that. And this is the reason why long form needs a return because we live in such a fast paced society nowadays that it's, it's virtually impossible for people to have a few minutes to spare because of course everybody has to work a couple jobs just to get by because the price of food is so high. So we have less and less time when we were promised more and more time. So any of you who are coming here from the short related content, please, if you have a moment, go and sit through some of our blue strip videos. They're more educational. They, the purpose, it's more actionable information that you can actually hopefully walk away from and have some knowledge to take with you about how to navigate difficult situations, okay? So that's basically all I wanted to say about this stuff right here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, maybe it hasn't really sunk in yet for me that I'm reaching out to such a large audience of people. And I do, you know, I mean, it's something I don't take for granted. I want you guys to understand that. Okay, I know you, you start to get haters and uh, I can relate because I was one of those people because you always, you see a person and they're getting this attention and you think that, you try to think about ways that it's not deserved. And uh, in some cases, maybe it isn't. But what I've also noticed is that anybody who has north of 100,000, or I'll put it this way, okay? If you're, if you're thinking about making a YouTube channel, for starters, it has to be out of personal interest. Okay, you can't just make a YouTube channel because you want to make money. It has to be of a genuine interest because if it isn't, as soon as it gets difficult, you're going to stop. And that's the thing with prepping as well. That's a great metaphor for prepping. If you're not genuinely interested in preparedness and you're just doing it because you're scared that the apocalypse is going to come and you want to check some boxes, then you're not going to stick with it. You're not going to evolve as a preparedness minded person and you're not going to learn more of the advanced skills because it just doesn't have the staying power. Okay. So you, you have to be genuinely interested in these things. And with YouTube, it's the same. You have to be, it has to be about the subject matter first and then 
all of the accolades will come. It's just like anything in life. If you're sincerely determined and you love something and you pour your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and if you're a moderate level of intelligence, you can really accomplish anything in this world. It's just hard work, perseverance is what most people lack, okay? And it doesn't take much. You just got to start where you are. Don't be envious. Uh, try to be optimistic and try to understand that people who are in places where you would like to be or aspire to be were going through what you're going through right now, okay? It's hard to see that, though. It's hard to think that Jeff Bezos was in a garage, you know, packing boxes and sending out packages. It's hard to believe that, isn't it? Because you only see the end result. You see the guy on the yacht, right? But you don't see where the humble beginnings were. And uh, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Anyway, I'm trying not, trying not to be didactic in this video, but it's turning out to be. This is a Nightcore air conditioner, okay? This is a very relatively lightweight, portable air conditioner. And I wanted to give you guys a heads up about this because we're going to be doing a dedicated review of this unit. Now, how these things come out of China is they go by many different names. Nightcore is a premium brand that typically is ahead of the curve when it comes to rolling out these patents. So they'll make something and then it'll be copied by a hundred different uh, companies. These have a very lightweight condenser. It can cool a room. So it's a real deal AC. It's not one of those fake ACs. Okay. This actually does cool the room. I believe this one, what is the uh, BTUs? I can't remember. I think it's around 2200 BTUs. So your general portable air conditioner that you're going to use for a room is around 22 or sorry, around 8,000 BTUs. So it's not as powerful as that. This is, this can bring a small room down to around 61 degrees Celsius, not Celsius. That would be, that would be terrifying. That's way beyond wet bulb and you're dead Fahrenheit. Okay. And uh, that's going to be more than enough. Like if you live in an apartment and you live in one of these places where you're seeing hotter and hotter days lately, but it's not hot enough to justify maybe a full air conditioning system in your home and you want something that's portable, you can use it in an RV, a truck. This thing actually works. And I was impressed that it works so well. We've had some very humid, muggy days here that we've tested it out in a tent. Uh, it's going to work in a tent. It's not going to work as good as it's going to work as good as the insulation is in the place that you're in. Okay. So if you're in a tent, that means that a lot of that warm air is permeating through the fabric of the tent. So it's going to work in a tent, but it's going to work better if you can in any way insulate that tent or add extra layers to prevent the sun. Uh, bearing directly down on the tent because it's going to have to work harder. Now, we'll work with a alternate power source. There's uh, a 12 volt or, or sorry, a uh, lead acid adapter, battery adapter. And you can also connect this to your lithium power source, power it by AC or DC power. So it's pretty cool. And it's actually surprisingly lightweight as far as air conditioners go. All right. So that's cool. Uh, we got this new thing in, and I don't know a whole lot about it. It's made by some, well, it's made by a uh, gas growler. They make the more portable propane canisters, those little mini five gallon ones. And those things are great because the one gallon or sorry, the one, the one gallon, the one liter propane canisters that are throwaway, uh, for starters, it's not a lot of propane. And oftentimes the big propane canisters are too big for a lot of people's portability needs. So those we've done a whole review on the gas growler. I would strongly encourage you if you're in a winter climate and you want something emergency for your car and you only have a small car, you don't have a lot of space in your trunk for survival gear. That is the perfect thing. Those little five liter propane tanks and the refillable. This one is made of some sort of, polymer material. I don't know what it is, but this is totally 110% certified. I'm not going to lie. They're very expensive. This thing is ultralight for a propane canister. It is corrosion resistant. Okay. And it is just pretty amazing. I must say. So this is for 
your off-roaders, your RVers, your, uh, what do they call themselves? Um, overland community, that sort of type. Yeah, and these things are pretty kick-ass. So, and it's probably gonna last forever. I mean, it better for the price you pay. I think these things are like 300 bucks or something like that. So, you know, as usual, you get what you pay for. Composite LPG cylinder container. Anyways, cool. And uh, beneath that is the Pelican coolers. We're actually gonna be doing a review of these coolers. My friends, we have a whole lot of videos that we just haven't released. And uh, part of the reason is, is that it's been so busy on the news front that we don't want that high quality content being caught up in the flurry of bad news. And so we're trying to wait till things die down a little bit to start releasing some more blue strip style content. And it is coming. So, you know, just be patient. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about in terms of the news today, there was a missile strike in Kramatorsk, unfortunately, and very unfortunately, there were civilian casualties, one of which was a child. Fortunately, there's a lot of children uh, dying in this conflict, and that's always a shame, and that's why we need to do whatever we can to bring this war to a halt as soon as possible. There's nothing I would like more than to not have to talk about World War III ever again. There's nothing I would like more than to be making videos about the wilderness and being compelled to go out back out into the bush and do stuff like that again. And we're doing it. It's just, it's not top priority right now with all this shit going on. But anyways, there was a fairly significant strike. The Russians are saying that it was on a facility which housed a lot of foreign mercenaries and possible higher-ups, NATO higher-ups and people who make decisions, okay? It was a decision-making center. There were a group of diplomats. I've, apparently, their visas expired, and uh, they're being trucked back to Moscow, so they're, uh, they're being expelled from the United States. Uh, there still are diplomats in the United States from Russia, Thank God, because when you know when that, when that ends, that's when the real threat of war starts. As long as there's diplomats between Russia and the United States or some envoys of some sort, then there's less risk. I'm not saying there's no risk. There's always a risk because nuclear war happens in a split second. But uh, yeah, so that's why there was an airplane that went and picked them up from Washington today. I believe. Uh, what else is in the news? New York City is going to be smoked out once again. As of tomorrow, the fires are raging. Uh, smoke all along the Great Lakes right now. Smoky as all hell. And what else do we have to talk about? The markets were up a little bit today. They've been down for the last week or so. And that is, I think, just a, a correction. The market doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know where this war is going to go, but I believe that the reality of a decoupled world are starting to sink in and all of the market fervor and frenzy is starting to realize that. But we almost had a second wind of FOMO and, and SPAC investing there. SPAC investing, I should say. SPAC, SPAC, pretty much the same thing. And it's starting to, it got checked again. Okay, people were starting to pile in to these nebulous projects like Palantir and these tech startups. People, money was starting to go back in and then they got corrected again. I would just encourage people to be very, very cautious. The only thing I would be investing in at this point in time is value stocks and commodities. Always commodities, gold. All, any day I'll buy gold because it doesn't matter what the price of gold is because the price is measured in the currency and we all know that the currency is printed mass produced just like these things are today and they aren't worth nearly what they used to be but it's still very cool and i can see my reflection in there it's like the modern gold record isn't it very cool anyways thanks a lot guys that's all i got for you today we're going to do our deep dive daily dose of doom and gloom tomorrow i just wanted to rant and rave about stuff to be brutally honest so sorry to disappoint if you came here just for the facts or the speculation. That's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Canadian Prepper out.